Hi everyone, just type in wide in the text chat if you can hear me okay. Yep, Sean, Steve. All right. Awesome. Okay, so welcome welcome to today's free webinar for Curses, Hexes, and Spells. Okay, so what you'll learn is what Curses, Hexes, and Spells are and why you need to get rid of them. The spiritual and scientific basis behind Curses, Hexes, and Spells and how they can sabotage your life by draining your finances, happiness, relationships, alignment with your path, and much more. What causes you to attract these negative energies and how to serve a plan to ensure you never attract them again. How to energetically protect yourself and deal with any curses, hexes, and spells you pick up unexpectedly, and more. Okay, so this webinar is to awaken you to what negative energies are in detail, how they affect you, and why you need to remove them. So, so I'll be making an offer at the end to join a course to further expand your knowledge around this area, how to protect yourself, and how to clear all negative energies attached to you. So just so you know, many have experienced significant improvement in overall happiness and an increase in income. Now, even if you don't get this offer, I'm confident you'll get tremendous value in this webinar today. So who does this for? So number one, you know you have curses, hexes, or spells, and see it as a big reason. I'd see it as a big reason why you aren't living with abundance in all areas of your life. The second one, you're going quite well overall, but know there are blockages stopping you achieving your highest purpose and soul mission. The third one, you're ready to shift and go to the next level. So just type in the text chat which one you think you are. Which one? Which one resonates with you? Steve, three, oh, Alicia, one. What's everyone else? Sean, one. Annie, two. So we've got a, right, we've got a, a wide range here. We've got a couple ones, a three, a two. And Danielle, three. So we've got another three here. All right. So anyone else before we move on? All right. So we got a couple threes, a couple ones, and a two. So moving on. Okay, so everything is energy and energy can be transformed, Master Raymond Grace. So, and negative money experiences. So, when, when this is happening to you or you know someone it's happening, it's happening to, you can guarantee, pretty much guarantee curses, sex and spells are very active and very rampant in your life. And another one, another big sign that you have them, or, so you, or someone else has this um, unhappiness, miserable, is and when you're feeling unhappy, miserable, out of purpose, you can guarantee as well that you've got curses, hex, and spells that are affecting your life. So now just a little bit about me. So I went to school until eighth grade, and then I was, I was homeschooled from ninth to 11th grade. And during, while I was homeschooled, I did busking in the female markets using card magic. So I never needed to get a job. I've never worked that one to this day. And I, and I did Cert 3 in Business Admin at TAFE last year of schooling. So last year in year 12, I did the Cert 3 in Business Admin. 
and that I am now helping people shift their problems and improve their lives. And I do that by teaching the spiritual and esoteric realms and doing a lot of teaching around that, as well as a lot of healing sessions. Okay, so now auric attachments. So now what we'll talk about quickly is the scientific basis behind curses, hexes, and spells. Because very simply, the universe is a gi one giant hologram. Now, and now previously with scientists and spirituality, there have been there has been a bit of conflict in times past. But, but now nowadays that the science is now start agreeing more and more with the scientific realm and that there really is a higher realm. They're now agreeing that there is a quantum or esoteric realm which governs all things. So some examples include Carl Pribben, Stanford University neurophysicist, and David Bowen, University of London physicist, Abit Goswani, Oxford University physicist, and Dr. Joe Dispenza. And that is consciousness precedes matter. So it's matter doesn't precede consciousness. Consciousness precedes matter. And and another another one is is the holographic universe, which is a book written by Michael Talbot. He suggests and he suggests that coffee cups, trees, table lamps might not exist or even exist in the way that you believe them to exist. I.e., it's all an illusion. Mystics are right. So really, I mean, the, the computer you see in front of you, or the cup, the cup you see, the wall that's next, the, the wall that is near you, all of that doesn't truly exist. It just exists because you believe it to you believe it to me. And and this is why, for example, Jesus was able to walk through walls and walk on water because instead of believing the wall was solid, he, he started to see it as more liquid. So he walked; he could walk through. And instead of seeing the water as um, as liquid, he saw it as a solid. <laughs> So, um, so basically, um, scientists have discovered that classic physics is questionable and quantum physics makes sense, i.e. there is an esoteric or um, mystical quantum realm. And they've also discovered all things are interconnected, so instead of everything being um, one of the whole, instead of everything kind of being separate, like, like normal, like we see all the humans kind of separated, we're actually all interconnected at the spiritual level, we're all one and the same. So, and so they've also discovered space and time doesn't really exist, it's not linear. And holographic theory is real, i.e. things don't exist until observed and remain waves until that point. <laughs> when, uh, and so now we'll talk attachments, because when you go analogical, you create attachments, basically. So you may wonder, what does going analogical mean? It means when you lose all track of time, you're in no time. This Now, this happens during a traumatic event pretty much every time. So I'll give you an example of that. Um, let's just say someone has just come home from work and they open the door and then they see their partner cheating on them. So, that, so but, but what happens there is they're in such a shock of state, they're in such a state of shock and hurt that they kind of become speechless, they, they kind of lose all track of time or all sense of time. And during that moment, they fracture off that, that, that their real soul. So basically, instead of that loving, beautiful kind of soul that they have, that it fractures off and becomes more hardened, more bitter, more angry, um, that kind of thing. So, so how many, so how many of, of you can relate to that? Like um, going analogical. So um, whether so, something traumatic in childhood or it, it currently, or like ten years ago, something like that. Steve, yes. Alicia, for sure, heaps of times. Sheldon, yes. Stan, Danielle, all stages of life. Yeah, this is very common. Like this analogical happens like a lot, and most people actually go analogical um, quite a, few, a few times a day at least. Okay, so you may wonder, how do you create attachments? Um, you you create them with when you experience extreme emotions, i.e., rage, jealousy, depression, alcohol addiction, etc. 
not making choices <coughs> aligned with universal law and your own truth. So going against karmic law and going against your own truth. Misuse of sexual energy. Um, putting money over your path, always worrying about it. So this is quite a big one. So how many of you can relate to this one? Where, where you kind of have no choice, but to put, but to, but you want to worry about money. Alicia, Sheldon, Steve, yes. So this is one way. So this, so not only not only do you have cursor sex and spells influencing around money too, but you can also create some horrible attachments around it. Uh, and not, this is another interesting one: cursing someone inwardly or outwardly, even if it's you're not, even if it's not your intention. Like, because what that means is that is that let's just say someone has really hurt you, and they they do that, and then you feel angry, you feel bitter. So then, so then, next thing you say, oh, I wish, I wish that they, I wish they'd experience this. I wish that they would kind of go broke and lose everything. Now, so then, so then it actually happens. So then, basically, what the, so then what's happened is you've cursed them, and, and and a lot of the time, just remember, it's not even done intentionally. But the problem is, this is um, one fast way to create attachments in your field and attract more curses, hexes, and spells. So now you may be wondering, what are attachments? So the, the energetic blockages and entities in your body and aura and your auric field, as well as negative thought form entities. So this one is quite interesting because let's just say you have a thought around something like like maybe like maybe someone really hurt you, someone and someone wasn't particularly nice to you. So you then so instead of kind of instead of dealing with it, you then you hold it in and then you kind of have all these thoughts. You keep um um I'm focusing that thought on that very on that very experience so then it, it builds up inside and then the, instead of becoming a thought it becomes like an entity and he says it is a little bit hard to understand the sound is a bit muffled is anyone else experiencing that problem Alicia is anyone else Sheldon isn't. Huh. Uh, Grace, pretty good, my end. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, I wonder if I could, if I just kind of shift the computer a little. See if it works if I just shift it a bit. Uh, can you, is that a bit better? So is that a little bit better now? At least a little? Okay, good. Okay, so so now I'm moving on. Okay, so so the problem is uh, the problem is attachments really bog you down and keep you off your path, and so you'll have low energy and a lot of weird emotional states and a lot of mood swings. You also feel miserable and unhappy, out of purpose. You always have to strive and struggle financially. The list just goes on and on and on. So now here's the thing, you attract these attachments today and even in childhood. Now childhood is actually where you're, mo where you're the most prone to attract attachments because children are so open to energies and they're less kind of tainted about the world in that sense because they've had less kind of conditioning and less upbringing, that kind, that kind of thing. And they're more connected to the spiritual, so they're more open. Now, these open up your, your auric field for negative energy and curses. 
it can ha because it can happen very easily by living on a polluted planet. So you, the problem is you not only have to deal with your own curses, hexes, and spells and attachments, but the ma but also the masses, like um, the mass consciousness, because everyone. Because most people are kind of operating um, with all with these attachments inside them, what's happening is that you're pick, you every day you you pick them up without knowing it. So, because when you're especially if you're sensitive to energy, because so, so what that means is that you have to clear yourself constantly and work on yourself every day, just like a dirty house. Because um, if you have a dirty house and you forget to kind of clean it i mean i mean sure it will stay good for a while but then it will, the dirt will come back and be even worse because when whereas when you clean it every day the house will stay in good shape and stay impeccable but then of course when you stop cleaning it it will stay good for a while last time so it's it, the same thing applies here so now we're going to go over this different Type, some different types of attachments. So the first one is hooks. So these kind, these are uh, this is an energetic. Uh, these are energetic kind of um, attachments that ba that basically is used to deplete your energy, keep you low in energy, and for, um, it's mainly used by someone to keep control over you. So this is very common it's, um, around relationships, for example. So like maybe someone who has a horrible someone has a horrible partner that they can't seem to leave but then um, but then if they look at the deeper meaning or the deeper um, side of it they might they may find that they may have a hook to that partner that partner has a hook on them so then it's depleting their energy and creating a codependency and kind of keeping them trapped and in control so, how many of you can relate to this, the hooks? Alicia can, Sheldon can. Yeah, these so these ones are quite common, and uh, some people may find that they may have like a lot of hooks in their auric field that needs to be cleared out. So spears and barbs. So this one is a direct attack. So um, this one is that is this one is done with the intent of hurting you and hurt and or someone someone launching this and implants. So these so this one is a very interesting one because there's a lot of kind of levels to this because implants are basically they're like control devices and. And the energetic and energetic kind of implants which are used to keep you under control and keep you and keep you your energy um, low and and especially influencing your thoughts around finances and around your own life and pretty much keeping you pretty much keeping you trapped in this low um, in this low three D realm. So how many of you um, can kind of relate to that where you feel like something, where you, you, you try to do something, but you feel like something is kind of stopping you and holding you back like this? Sheldon, um, Sheldon, yes. Anyone else? Can anyone else relate to this? Alicia, yes, regarding my path of energy. Now, now that's a good point, Alicia, because um, the implants are especially, um, especially active around the around the, your path of energy because these implants are kind of know if you um, if you kind of they kind of know if you if you stay off path and if you have low energy, then it's very easy to control you because when you're off path and when you have low energy, then this, this re then it really opens you up for for dark attachments and even more implants. Because remember, because um, something interesting to know is they only get in through invitation. They can only come in if you allow it. I feel that is true, Alicia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
etheric cords. So, so this is another horrible attachment because, uh, when you, because as you can see in this picture here, um, it's literally a cord attached to somebody. So, physically, you may not be near someone, but if you go into the deeper spiritual and energetic part of it, you'll realize you really are attached because, um, with etheric cords, when you have it, it creates like a, these create like a codependency, and it creates. And it basically creates um, something where you feel attached to someone and you can't quite shake them. You can't quite shake them. This is especially common in like um, relationships, like in a breakup or a divorce, where although physically you're no longer with them, spiritually and energetically you're still married to that person because the cord energetically has not been cut and you haven't released them on that spiritual realm. So, can anyone else relate to this one, where where you feel like you can't quite let go of that partner or let go of somebody in that way, where you feel like there's a cord or attachments? Hey, yes, that's it, Alicia. Like when you when you break up and keep going back, yeah, that's that would that would be a big sign of an etheric cord. So can anyone else relate to this one? Where you um, it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't even have to be a partner. Like it could be a friend or family or anything like that. All right, so moving on. So, okay, so now now we'll discuss curses, hex, and spells here. So, um, what a curse is, um, is what a curse is, is like is an attack on somebody spiritually. So, but most of the time it's done unintentionally, as I've talked about before. So, where so basically, by cursing somebody, like thinking, "Oh yeah, this person's horrible. They deserve that. They, they deserve to suffer. I hope they suffer. I hope they do bad. I hope they do terrible in their life. I hope they get broke." So then it can actually happen, and then you've just kind of placed a curse on that person, and that and the problem is you get you get a lot of consequences for that one because because um, not only does that person get affected, it, it affects you. Um, it affects you more because. Because you, because that that's a big violation of the of the high universal laws, and and it also and it also um, and it also means you haven't let go, you and you haven't sorted out the problem at hand. So then, so then you open yourself up for a whole bunch more curses and, and attachments. So and so that's curses and what hexes are based on um, hexes are usually on the body and that they they wish they're the ones who wish ill luck around business cause and they cause terrible health around you etc. And um, spells that's the spell is like a deception that's placed over the mind or the heart. So so like you kind of see in the movies a bit the spells um, will be placed is placed on someone um, to kind of deceive them on their mind and their heart. So can anyone else, can anyone relate to this? Um, any curses, hexes, and spells, or you, you feel like you've got quite a bit of these? So just type a Y in the text chat if it relates to you. Alicia does. Steve does. For me, it does. Sheldon does. All right, so quite a few here. Because I know when I cleared all of these off me, it, it certainly helped. It certainly helped me a lot. So discarnates. So so what dis, um, discarnates are beings who have died, but they haven't yet passed through. <clears throat> they haven't yet passed through the tunnel to. To kind of go through for another reincarnation, because so basically, what 
these they're kind of they, the the way you can think of them is like a ghost, like where where someone has died, but they haven't, but they haven't quite passed through that tunnel. They didn't make it through. So the problem is they're stuck and they're trapped in the fourth dimension. So they're no longer in a physical body. But it is it's horrible for them up there because let's just say that one was a drug user while they were alive, and then. So, but while a drug user down here can just go to the local dealer, and buy a gram or something, um, like of weed or cocaine, whatever, whatever they do, um, the problem is that user, um, the drug user who's died can't do that because they're not in a physical body anymore. So well, the only thing they can do is attach, is they latch onto someone who has that similar energy, and then they feed off that person's energy, kind of to use it as their food in a sense. Demons, evil spirits. So these are these are higher beings. These are much higher beings who who were once of the light, who are once connected and very close to source, but they but they violated the higher laws and they kind of wanted they wanted to have their own way and turned away. So then they were cast out of the higher realms and were no they were no, no longer allowed back in. So that now they're now trapped in these lower three D realms in the in the lower spiritual realm. Negative entities. So these so these are more like organizations and more like groups and and kind of um, churches like Freemasonry. And these these negative entities have the power to um, these negative entities have the power to pretty much send out dark masters and send out enforcers in the spiritual realm, i.e., like cartels or um, cabals, um, anything around that. So, uh, and a classic one, of course, is the Illuminati, is a negative entity. Hacks. So this is like an this is an agreement that um made with someone that doesn't who doesn't align with you, or or you or you're dealing with a pact made by one of your ancestors or parents, anything around that. So inner vows. So these are they, they're promises made to yourself. I.e., I will never be like my mother. I'll never marry someone like my mother. Something like that. Outer vows. So, so these are these are um, out, vows made outwardly. Like a classic one, of course, is marriage. Like death, to, like until death do us part. Um, we'll we'll be together forever. <clears throat> so that's a vow. <clears throat> deserved and undeserved karma. So this is another one where where you it's basically you reap what you sow, and where. And where you, where basically you, you done. Of course, you do get your fair share of, of undeserved karma, but you may, but you also can get undeserved karma. Um, in a way, you may think of it that way, but really, it could actually be that the high masters are more just testing you. So this is a very interesting one. You may be wondering, OMG, how do I protect myself from curses, hexes, and spells? So there's a, there's various ways you can do this. So, the, uh, but now the best way to do that, of course, is by is by doing the energetic clearing and the spiritual clearing. But the other ways that you can do this is by is by um, making much better choices and making better choices more aligned with your truth and aligned with universal law and and, and making more sacrifices and. And base and basically another another way to do that is by watching your thoughts, uh, by ma watching your thought patterns, watch it and thinking before you speak, or that kind of thing. And and of course, if you if you remember, um, of course, when you remember what each one means, you can kind of you can pretty much do the opposite of what they really are about. So then you don't attract them anymore. So instead of cursing someone inwardly, you can you can sort out the problem at hand and then forgive them, let go. So that's that's a, that's a big one actually is to forgive and let go. Um, if someone has really wronged you and just again sorted at hand whatever way you feel led to do and another one is another way is to take to take better care of your health that's another one so then these hexes don't affect you any further 
another one is to um, is to not be too trusting and not being too gullible, so then you don't get a deception placed over your heart. Okay, so now now I'll just um, now I'll just tell you a bit about my story. So um, basically, with me, I'm, I'm I'm William Black. I'm 18 years old, and I and as I said before, I was in school from kindy to eighth grade. And during that time, I was during that time it wasn't a great experience for me. I never enjoyed school. I never fit in with the school system. And I and although I did make friends, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't quite enjoy the school. It just didn't make sense to me. I was, and I was always, and I was acting out. I had a lot of anger, and I was a very, I was very depressed and very um, and low on energy, and I felt miserable most of the time as well. And I even had suicidal thoughts. But but then one day, um, my dad met this sort of great healer in the met this great healer. And then, and then that kind of changed everything because my dad, my dad got his healing himself. And then what happened was he, he came back, he came back here and then he, he started teaching us about the healing. He did some heal clearings on me and, and then it really amazed me. And that's when I, and I, that's when I really decided I wanted to go on this spiritual journey. And then what had happened was my dad went. Then, so then my dad pulled us out of home school and my mum and then my dad and my mum pulled us out of school and then they, they homeschooled us for, um, until, from when I was year 9 to 11 and during that time I um, although I did my regular schooling which was the, um, the classic kind of math, science, history, English, that kind of thing I still um, I was I was much happier and I I had a much I felt like I had a better life and then because I I also got a lot more one-on-one -on -one help from the from our tutors because in school of course when you're in a class of thirty other kids getting one-on-one -on -one help is close to impossible so so then getting that one-on-one -on -one help and getting what I needed in homeschooling worked out much better for me and. Of course, um, I'd always done card magic, um, even while I was in school. I'd done it from, I started in eighth grade. And then um, while I was still homeschooled, I um, I went into this um, kids' business program of mentorship. And what happened was I, um, that's how I started busking in the female markets and street performing. And I was doing that while I was homeschooled and also what, and also the time I was in TAFE, so I did it for uh, three, for pretty much three years, and then it was during that time I was making money that way, and I never needed to work, never needed a job, and it was something I loved. So, and of so, of course, that was really great, and 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 then last year I did TAFE and. Uh, uh, even last year, which is interesting, I wasn't particularly in a good place last year because I, I had just because I, I came down with a heart with a really bad case of eczema, and then I, and I was it was it gone all over my body, and it was real, and it was it kept getting worse. So then one day I went to my dad, and then he. And, and then he kind of um, I went, I moved into his house. And then what happened was I, um, I changed my diet, my drinking, and I started putting regular cream on it and uh, doing a lot of spiritual and deeper clearings on myself around the emotional turmoils, that kind of thing. And my mum, my mum also helped me with it as well on this journey. And pretty much since then, that's what, that's what really kind of got me moving on my path because I was really kind of off path while I was in Because tape did serve me for the time, but I wasn't really doing uh, what I loved. I wasn't really doing the spiritual as much, so it wasn't a good, t a great time. So then, so then I I basically went um, and when my dad started this work, he got me involved in it, and he got and I started off by writing different posts um, on the Awakening Within group, and then slowly but surely I I moved up to um, doing these webinars and presenting them, and now here I am today because. And what, but what really got um, helped me kind of enhance my healing abilities and really 
and really helped me to see the higher realms and higher blockages. It was when I went to this um, healing retreat in Byron Bay where we stayed at this guy's place for a few days and, and during that during that time I had an amazing experience where all these beings came to me and they spoke to me and they they did a lot of clearing of clearing and cleansing over me like a one big purge out and then they pretty much were giving me specific messages like telling me to move in this work and to really to really get myself um, cleared and they allowed me to see a lot more of the higher realms so that's just a bit about my story there so now so now so now now what i'll be showing you is just a few testimonials about um about um some people who have experienced this work this work and this and how it really works alicia what a remarkable young man you are oh thank you alicia that means a lot testimonials so now we'll just be showing a few quick studies of people who have, who have worked with me so now this is Eliza Oakley from W from Perth WA. During the past year, I've participated in groups where William Black has led many sessions. William offers a great combination of knowledge, respect, and power. He is very supportive of all group members and invites feedback and validates each person's experience. William brings much insight into the work he does and he shares his gifts generously. It is both a pleasure and an honor to work with him. So that's Eliza Oakley. Steve Plummer from Sunshine Coast, Queensland. Will is an old soul in a young man's body. He taps into the higher realms and sees things many can't. He helps you shift emotionally and spiritually. I've seen this firsthand as he works with others and experienced it myself. He has a genuine desire to help and it's great to see he is continuing his important and much needed work. If you ever get the opportunity to work with him, grab it with both hands. It will be transformative for you. Steve Palmer, marketing strategist and sales language expert, Sunshine Coast, Queensland. So that's just Steve Plummer. For me, that's uh, Hamid. So, so now this is this is uh, another one. William Black and I have not met in person yet. So she's from Chicago. However, I have gone to know him over the past year from participating in several City Awakening webinars. It is wonderful how the internet makes it, makes it is possible for like-minded individuals from all over the planet to connect and interact with one another without leaving home. If you just go by William's photo or his appearance, you'll probably be amazed when you discover the high level of dedication and willingness that this young man has to serve humanity. I remember William being invited to assist on webinars presented by City Awakening. And I remember that too, actually. He is gifted with the ability to heal on so many different levels. Now, after diligent in-depth study and practice, he is well prepared to offer services on his own. I recently experienced a one-on-one -on -one DNA activation with William. It was amazing. During and after the activation, I experienced the glorious feeling of the higher realms and the presence of beings from the higher realms. There were messages of information and confirmation for me as well. Physically, I had experienced some healings in the air, in areas of my body where I had old injuries that I had sustained years and even decades ago. At the end of the session, I felt a new level of confidence, strength, and peace within myself. I also felt physically lighter and my posture noticeably improved. William takes time to explain the process. He encourages you to ask questions and he takes the time to answer those questions. He strives to help you understand your results may not be the same. However, the services offered will address the highest priorities for your particular needs at the time when you're ready to go to the next level and become who you are meant to be and to live the life you're meant to live. I highly recommend seeking out William Black and utilizing the services that he offers. So that's just for me now and Christine Evans from Perth, WA. Um, my name is Christine Evans. I live in the southwest of Western Australia. I have been on an upward spiral of spiritual learning since 2003, when I was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer. I have worked with many people on the physical, mental, and spiritual levels. I eventually became an energy healer myself. I have dealt with the cancer and have come to realize that I must clear my energy field constantly and also deal with every aspect of my life in order to be the being I was meant to be. 
Uh, don't really have luck with the latter part of 2018, though his father, Warren Black, the founder of the Awakening Within Group. At our first meeting, William did an amazing clearing for me, which has helped clear the path for my future progress. Since then, we have worked together and I have learned um, several different ways of clearing from him. He has a great deal of knowledge, especially around clearing and dealing with dark entities, curses, hexes, and spells, etc. He has done numerous clearings for me and my family, and we are very grateful. William has been doing this work from a very young age and has a lot of experience in this field. He is also kind, compassionate, and has a lovely sense of humor. So that's, that's Christine Evans. So now, Shark, so now that's just um, a few testimonials. So now what we'll do is, um, what we have here is the Sharkers, because um, just, because just remember, when it comes to attachments, they usually base themselves in your Sharkers, which are, which are your energy centers and where your energy flows. So, when, so of course, when there's a lot of blockages around your Sharkers, then that means that you're gonna have a lot, of, you're gonna have low energy and it will be very challenging for you. Like, and of course, as you can see here, each chakra represents something different. And there's also, we also have eight morphogenetic chakras located more in the auric field. So, of course, they base themselves depending on the, on the frequency. So, for example, if you had felt, if you experienced heartbreak from a relationship, you have attachments in the heart chakra. If you had one where you didn't speak your truth or use the word for deception, then you'd have an, an attachment in the throat chakra. So that's just some examples. Okay, so any questions before we do the clearing? All right, no questions. So now everyone just focus on the code here. Inhale it to your third eye. And then just see it there, imagine it there. And then just close your eyes. And breathe in through your nose for four counts. Hold for four counts. And breathe out through your mouth for eight. Breathe in for, for four counts through the nose. Hold for four counts. And out through the mouth for eight. And just keep breathing like that as you allow yourself to get into, into a, a lower and a deeper brain state. So just keep breathing, keep imagining the code. commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this clearing code is be used to clear um, to clear any curses of each person here and clearing off any hexes or spells or any anything like that any attachments affecting them around their finances around their energy and around their uh, around their path and purpose and clear it all and transmute it permanently from each person here, from all 15 chakras, and from all levels of their, um, from their multi-dimensional being now. To Asia and today.
and just keep breathing.
Okay, so how's everyone feeling after that? So what did, what did everyone experience there? Steve kept yawning throughout that. Wow, Alicia a bit sick in the tummy. Wow, sounds like a lot purging out there. Felt, felt yolks, um, yolks removed from my neck. Oh wow, for me, mate, that's amazing. Yeah, I felt stuff breaking off as well. Alicia and a weird spinning feeling in my heart chakra. Oh, wow. Lexi releasing feeling from root chakra. Oh, wow. A lot of stuff going on here. So it sounds like it's really working on all the chakras. The root chakra around survival and the heart chakra around love, all that. And then the neck around the truth and, all, and everything around that. Sean felt my head felt heavy at first and then it cleared up. Wow, so the head, so the crown chakra and the third eye. <laughs> Very wow. So now everyone just take a sip of water. Just take a sip of water to integrate. So now that's it. Okay, so now any questions before we move to the next step? Right, no questions. So now let's move on. So what's next? So the curses, curses, hex is spells removal. So this will be a three class transformation. Gain financial abundance, remove all negative energies, increase your happiness and more. And, and it will be all for as little as $22 per week. So just keep watching for more details. So what you'll get is three live training sessions to remove all negative energies, unlimited access to the recordings of each session. So what benefits does it give? This three class training will help you if you're ready to clear negative energy and entities, curses, hexes and spells around your money, business and investments. Stop self-sabotage with your finances. Clear negative associations with tax and or governments which subconsciously hold you back financially, which have come about through curses put on you. So clear blockages keeping you out of alignment with your purpose, and which cause it um, to be hard to make money and become financially abundant. Create an energetic shield over your finances. So the start date, it'll be the 21st of November, so which is next week. Okay, so so who this is for? This is this is for so this is for you if you're open-minded to creative out-of-the-box solutions and higher realms. You know you need a financial or personal miracle. 
you're fed up with making bad decisions around money, relationships, health, life purpose, etc., and are willing to do anything to solve your current situation, clear blockages and transform your life. You sense false spirit guides are behind this and desire to do something about it. You're an action taker, teachable and humble. Follow through what you start and know the importance of keeping an open mind. Okay, so, so who this is not for? It's not for sceptic and closed-minded people who don't see curses, hex and spells or energetic blockages as relevant to them. I.e. You're, you're in a delusion and believe your life is good when it actually sucks. I'm sorry, but we can't help you. Not for um, new people to the webinars. You've only just started coming to the Awakening Group and are just feeling your way into it. That's all good. Thanks for coming. We really appreciate it. This is not for uncommitted non-action taker. If you blame others for your poor choices, lack of results, and love playing the victim, it's not for you. It really isn't. So you won't attend classes and you'll expect a magic bullet to fix everything. So today's investment, it'll be, it's $222 a 20 in 10 weekly installments of 2220, or if, if up front, nine, 197. So, okay, so here's a special incentive only if you commit today. So this will be the bonus. It'll be a special group healing with myself to clear any curses around money, stopping you from living a prospering and fulfilling um, life. Uh, and, the, and an extra plus the first the first six of them that sign up get a 30 minute session with myself personally a personal one-on-one -on -one session okay so now now what now watch the first class and so this is a money back guarantee watch the first class and if in the in the unlikely event that um, you decide after that that it isn't for you let us know before the second class and we will issue a prompt and courteous 100 percent refund no questions asked okay so here's what to do next this is our payment link so click on click on the link and choose your payment method i.e pay up front or buy a payment plan so if you need to talk before committing contact me directly email me at, at william at the awakening within net so so what I'll, what I'll do here is uh, i'll place this i'll place this link in into the chat All right, so can everyone see that link? Yeah, Sean can, Alicia can, Steve can. All right, awesome. All right, so, yep, so Sean, I'm in. Awesome. So what about everyone else? So just type a Y if you're interested. Alicia, thank you so much. No problem, Alicia. <laughs> Grace, I'm in. Awesome. Anyone else in? All right, oh, all right, awesome. So any final questions before we end the webinar today? Do I, Grace, do I get mates, mates? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I'm currently in your spirit guides class. Will this clash? Uh, no, no, it won't because this will be every Thursday. So this will just be every Thursday. So um, you'll be, it'll be okay. 
Grace asks if Stephen Perth. Yes, he is Grace. Okay, so so now any so any more further questions before we end today? Grace says, great, I'm doing the spirit guides on Saturday 8 a.m. or Sunday 6 p.m. So, all right, so there you go, Steve. It'll be on Saturday 8 a.m. and Sunday 6 p.m. She's going to put it up on Facebook today. All right, awesome. All right, so any further questions before we finish? No problem, Steve. All right, no further questions. All right, well, so thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for thank you all for coming. A great webinar and a great clearing, and uh, I look forward to I look forward to, um, to seeing those who signed up, and I look forward to to signing this course. And no, no problem, Lexi. Thanks, everyone, and bye for now.